What's up, guys? It's the Air Aid Lord, Chris, whatever you'd like to call me. Um, this is a tutorial slash walkthrough for how to use Windows 8, a Windows 8 user guide. Basically, <clears throat> going over the most frustrating things that I find people have trouble with, including myself when I first got this, when it shipped with my gaming PC in December for my birthday. Um... Yeah, Windows 8 really, in my opinion, isn't the greatest operating system. It adds really, it just adds frustration to the whole experience and actually finding files and making, you know, certain pathways accessible and other things. So, I'm going to be doing a couple different things in this video, and I'm going to be showing you some of the frustrations I have when I want to do simple applications, and you'll also find this when you want to be actually doing other things in your computer. It might be transferring things with a thumb drive or other activities such as that, and I'll show you where the complications come into play. So, uh, I'm making this video for a couple reasons. First of all, as I just said, a lot of people seem to have difficulties with Windows 8 in using it. Windows 8 is, ve is a very different operating system from the previous ones Microsoft has released, and I feel people could benefit greatly from my um, help and wisdom that I'll offer with this. The second reason I'm doing this is because my friend Pete, who I'm sure a lot of people probably know, but if you don't know, he's a good friend of mine, and he is making a transition to Windows 8 in the next couple of weeks with a new computer that he is getting, and basically, um, I thought I could do him a service, and also you guys, if you have Windows 8, by basically walking through the whole process, basically offering the wisdom I have with the software to any other people who want to know more information on it. So... I'm going to be going to the start screen in just a moment. I'm probably going to black out some of the personal information that is on that screen so it just doesn't get, it's not public or whatever. Because you'll notice when you first <clears throat> boot up your screen, all right, first of all, this isn't the screen you start on. Most likely, when you start your computer that has Windows 8 on it, it's going to ask for you to set up some things, simple verification and stuff. I can't go through that process with you because obviously I already set up my computer. However, once you pretty much have set your computer's initial processes up, like you've installed programs like Microsoft Word and stuff like that, um, I have, I actually own Microsoft Word like on CDs, like I own multiple copies, like I think I have over 30 CDs of Word and like different programs from Microsoft, just because like I've had these programs for almost 20 years now and I just, you know, I kind of save them up. My, my A lot of them are left over from my dad when he used to do he used to customize stuff with his computer that he has downstairs. So we have a lot of CDs lying around. So I've never had to like pirate Microsoft products, really. It's, 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 it's never really, I've never really done that. So let's go to the start screen. Now, yes, there's no start button. Let me just say that, okay? There is this weird little icon. And if you drag it, you'll have like this option to make your, your toolbar a little bit larger. And uh, no, there's no more start button. So now, you know, in Windows 7 XP in Vista, you would click in this bottom left-hand corner and there would be a little button that said start and you'd be able to access all of your files just from that button. I think that's easy, but Microsoft basically split it into two separate sections, okay? First section is your start section. This is, again, this is where you're going to be when you first enter um, your computer. This is the screen you're going to be greeted with. You're going to have different applications. Now, because I have an Asus gaming laptop, I have this um, Asus apps, which is basically, you know, just stuff like Paint and Xbox-related stuff, Skype, since I do have a Skype account. Then there's other stuff. Obviously, where the blacked-out sections are, this is where your photos are. This is my email. This is my email address right here. Uh, and as you saw, I can you can scroll with this little scroll sidebar. You can scroll across the screen. And as you can see, there I have these are all of my applications. These are basically just all this. This is all stuff featured in free DVD video soft that I use for other programs. Uh, these are some of my other program files. You know GTA 2 and all the other crap I have downloaded on this computer. So those are all your program files are situated on the right hand side. Okay, look, you can see them. They basically organize in the way you can you can move them around and stuff. But I have you know go. This is my search engine, Google Chrome. I use Skype. You know this is updates for Apple. I have iTunes right here for listening to music. WinRAW is how I open zipped files. 
Uh, and then this is the main, this product encompasses all of these products as I just showed you over here. And literally, you don't even have to use the scrolling feature. If you just hit your mouse against the sides of the screen, you'll actually move from side to side. Okay? So, basically, um, I don't even know what half of these applications are, to be quite honest. I mean, some of them like Word and Facebook Uploader and all this other shit. But, yes, this is your main screen. And if you click on some of this stuff, it will bring you to different things. Like, if you click on your photos, you're going to see a slideshow of your photos. Okay, now, I don't know if I want to give a tutorial of that because that would kind of be jumping into some personal information of mine. Um, but let me see if I can, hmm... Uh, how about we do videos? Because I, you know, people have watched my YouTube videos. Any videos I have on here are probably YouTube videos. So as you can see, the screen is basically taken up by a big look. This is very different from anything you're offered on uh, your Windows 7 PC. The whole interface when you first load up your computer is based on tiles, and the video section, you know, you'll have all the promotional shit and whatnot, and then you can scroll over and. Look, here's all my videos. These were some random videos I was making for tests. These were the Halo matches I took with my friend Matt the other day. So you can see that there's some things here that are organized. Look, The Walking Dead. You know, there's a lot of things that are kind of organized, you know, by things you can buy, things that you can purchase in the store. And then on the left-hand side, you have My Videos, which, you know, you could always click on that, and it'll give you an itemized list of all of the different videos that you have. And you can use this arrow to go back. You can go click on this other stuff. And there's also updates. You can hit this update button if you want to update it. So, you know, you can hit the back button and just, you know. And then, so let's say you go to this video page and you want to view your videos. Okay, you know, I'm kind of done with that. Um, now, if you want to get out of the page, you can do a couple things, okay? First of all, if you go, if you put your mouse, everything in Windows 8 has to do with the corners of the screen. If you bring your mouse into the corner, you're going to get different options, okay? Hit this side, and you're going to drop down this little menu where you can hit the, the start screen, or you can just hit the desktop so you can go back, okay? If you click in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to cycle between your various screens. So if I click this button, now I'm on my desktop. If I click it again... Now I'm on the video page. And if you open other pages, such as your email and your pictures, now you're going to have four screens to go between. So you're going to be going between your desktop, the pictures, and the, and the videos. Okay. You go in the bottom right-hand corner here, and this is where you're going to find all your programs. Right now, it tells you the date, you know, Friday, March 1st, and uh, the time and all that other stuff. In the right-hand corner here, you have the Start button, which will again bring you back to that main tile screen, the Devices tab, the settings of your computer, uh, sharing. This is how you're actually. This is an option you have if people are transferring information from one computer to another. If you do this, you can actually share information. This is how I have all my files on this computer. I used to own a uh, like a crappy Windows Vista laptop for like seven years, and. When I bought this computer, I needed to transfer the file from the Vista laptop over to this one. So I use this share feature. Is probably I think it's on every computer. I'll show you how to get to it, but you basically just go to your Documents tab, and it's in the Network settings. So here is this feature right here. If you're looking to find a program, this is what you want to do right here. Hit the Search button, okay? Now when you hit the Search button, it might go by Videos because you're obviously on the Videos tab. But if you want to get past that, just go back to the desktop, bring the menu up, hit search. Now look at this here. Now we have a view of all of our different things. We have desktop, camera, calendar, Bing. We have games. These are all, it's all based on tiles. It's no longer just like single applications and stuff. Everything's based on a tile that leads to something else for ease of access. So if I wanted to find, so now this is the thing that kind of pisses me the fuck off because, look, all right, say I want to open Microsoft Word, okay? It's not as easy as I can just hit the start button and then hit Microsoft Word and that's it. Done, you're done. Instead, now you got to basically, one sec. Sorry for the jump there, just had to get something real quick. Anyway. If you wanted to find Microsoft Word, it's a bit of a process, okay? You have Microsoft Office, which will bring you to some of the other Microsoft applications, but if I actually want to find Microsoft Word, the program, if I want to open another program to Microsoft Word, I have to type it in this little search bar, okay? And it's, gonna, it's right here. However, 
look at it's organized in, in weird columns we could go to the settings and we'll have options that we can click to change the interface of the program we have files which is all of my files that I've used in Microsoft Word so if you want to find a specific document something you've written something you've saved to your computer this is where you'll find them if you want to find pathways for files and settings like change mouse click settings and wheel settings and audio settings you can do this from the settings tab the apps tab shows you the programs that you can use and that's basically like when you type in something. So let's say I wanted to find my control panel. That's a big one for people to use so they can access their um, their information. Command prompts is also a bigger one. So so control, oops, I spelled that wrong. Control panel. So now look, all I have to do is click it. And it's actually going to open in a small little window right here. So that's very easy to use. And, you know, I can just minimize it. And now it's a little, it's a little thing in this pop-up bar, which we're very familiar with. Okay. So... That's basically how you search for programs, okay? If the program is on your computer and you've installed it correctly, it should show up if you search it. Now, the problem I have is that if I want to open multiple Microsoft Word documents, what do I have to keep doing? I have to, you know, all right, say I'm, I'm, uh, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Say I'm right here, I'm typing a document, you know, pretend I'm, I have Microsoft Word opened, and I'm typing a document. What if I want to open another document? All right, with the old Windows 7, you could simply, you know, you could hit new from the, you know, Microsoft Word page, or you could just go up and hit another one, and it was very easy. Now, you know, I got to go over here and click here and type it in. It's it's just, it's a pain in the ass, and it's frustrating for some people to uh, to do that. So, um, so yeah, so um, I'm trying to think of any other information that you might want to know. Um... Do keep in mind that when you put, like, there are some, most Windows 8 computers actually don't really support CD drives. I'm lucky enough that I bought a version of Windows 8 that does support a CD drive, so that's why I'm able to install games like Half-Life, uh, Train Town, Age of Empires, and uh, Star Wars. Um, so it's because, you know, those games came out in the early 2000s. The reason I can play them is because I have a CD drive that's built into this computer. I'll, like, if I can find it, I'll show you. The, uh, the drive here. Um, yeah, so we've got the CD drive right here, and then the, the network locations are just those, and I'll probably edit that out as well. Um, this is my OS. As you can see, the total size of my computer is 910 gigabytes. I have four, set, 647 gigabytes free. Probably going to have to free a bit of more of that up because usually I don't have that much, but you know, it's usually all the YouTube videos I make kind of clog the computer and uh, such stuff like that. This network thing right here, this is what I was talking about, how you can transfer files and stuff between computers. It's all. This is the window you do it in. And it's kind of funny because for ease of access, like this window is still the same. Like if you want to access your files without having to do that bullshit search thing right here, literally all you got to do is just hit the little folder button and you can browse between, you know, documents, music, pictures, and library, and then you can find stuff on the side home group again that's how you organize uh, the files between your different computers and such and um, and uh, yeah that's basically it uh, if you hit the upper right hand corner here I don't think anything happens if you hit the upper left hand corner here you'll cycle through the windows the bottom left hand corner will bring you back to the start menu which is how you start the computer and um, again I know it's gonna take some getting used to to not click on this thing right here because you're going to think oh all my files are going to show up when I click that that's not really the case now look what I just did right there if you go into the bottom left hand corner screen then you drag your mouse up you actually have a black bar and the black bar organizes like again if I had multiple windows opened like for pictures and for email it would list them in this in this black bar right here but because I only have one window open I can only change between that window okay so um, that's really all the information I can give. Again, with me, I when I first got this computer, I immediately installed the programs that I needed, you know, Skype and Google Chrome, because Internet Explorer fucking sucks, and um, stuff like that. So I basically downloaded all my files, and then kind of mixed and matched with them once I had them all set. So... Um, so that's really all the information I can give. Um, if you have any specific questions, do let me know. Um, again, it is kind of a slippery slope with a lot of this stuff. 
Um, there have been glitches, which I just want to address real quickly, where sometimes, like, you can't click on these icons, like the music volume icon and the and the internet settings and all that shit. Like, sometimes you can't actually click on that. Like, there's been gl there's been glitches where, like, it won't let you click on it, and if you turn off the computer and put it back on, it'll let you for some reason. Like, I've had those glitches happen before. Um, I've also had weird internet problems with this computer. Like, sometimes it'll say I'm connected to my router in the internet, but, like, the web pages just won't, like, they just won't open. It's almost like I'm not connected to the internet, but at the same time I am. It's like this weird equilibrium. So I literally just disconnect my computer from the internet, which, you know, I right-click here and I do open network sharing. Then I disable the network. Then I rejoin the network by troubleshooting problems. And then that seems to fix the problem. I don't know why it happens with this fucking computer, but it seems to have that issue for whatever reason. Um... I'm trying to think about anything else I'm missing at the moment. I don't think I am. Again, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments of this video and I will get to it. I'm sure there's something that I'm missing. Um, again, the resolution of my screen is probably large. I don't know how large yours is, but... My screen resolution is 12, 1920 by 1080, which is recommended. And then you can go down, and that's going to be very, very fucking small if you do that. Um... Multi monitors, that's that's automatic um, and stuff like that. So um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you for watching this video. Again, the main things I wanted to I know this isn't really a long that long of a video, but the main things I wanted to stress in this video were the the, the how the the whole freaking finding your programs works, the corners, the settings and stuff like that. Look, if I hit my settings, look at all the features I have. I can I can easily go to my control panel. I can personalize PC info. I can get help in case I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I can go to my internet connection and stuff like that. This is actually how you power off the computer. I don't know if I showed this. If you want to turn off your computer, hit settings, hit the power button, and you're either you have options between restart the computer, shut down the computer, and sleep. So that's how you turn off the computer. You can always hit the power button, but if you want to do it manually through the um, the mouse and clicker, that's how you do it. So, and then you can just click to get rid of that menu. So. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I'm hoping I'm not missing anything. Again, if I am, just comment and I'll address it. I'll reply to you and I'll address it. Thank you for watching. This is the Airy Lord. I'll see you later. Goodbye.